Hey, what's happening guys? We've got a little simple Arduino project here that we're going to start simple and evolve into something a little bit more useful. So basically what we've got going on here is we've got a potentiometer controlling a fan and we're reporting the values on an OLED. Because the Arduino is limited to a maximum of 40 milliamps of current source, we're going to be driving the fan through a MOSFET. And we're going to be powering both the fan and the Arduino through an external power supply that we'll hook up here. Now, let me show you a simple schematic for this so that you can understand the connections. Here we have our positive rail, and I'm giving it 6 volt DC. Down here we have our ground rail, or 0 volt, whatever you want to call it. Now, the first thing here, we're going to go from left to right. I should have wrote that in there, huh? Is a 10 microfarad electrolytic cap across the power rail. What that does is it protects the Arduino processor, the Atmel 328P, from any little brownouts in power. If something's grabbing more power, for instance, a fan, that will give it a little bit of reserve and it won't brown out and go into reset. Okay, next thing we have is our end channel enhancement mode MOSFET. In this case, I'm using an IRF2907Z but basically any MOSFET that has a uh, RDS on that will fit your needs will, will work out just fine. Okay, it is like this. Drain, source, and gate. So we're draining from our positive rail and we're sourcing to the fan with the control, our gate, being controlled by the Arduino. Next we have our fan, one connection hooked up to the source of the MOSFET, the other connection going to ground. Now we have our Arduino here, and we're using uh, six connections. We're putting power into the Arduino through the VN pin, and of course we're going to ground. We are controlling the MOSFET through pin 3, which is a PWM pin, and we're getting our input value from A0 which is an analog input. Then we have our potentiometer. In this case I'm using a 470K because that's what I grabbed. This value doesn't matter. Whatever potentiometer you have, it's just going to read a value from 0 to 1023. Then we have, in this case, our OLED display. It's one of those cheap Chinese uh, 0.96 128 by 64 and it's controlled with that SSD 1306 chip so we can use the Adafruit library. Uh, VCC goes to our positive rail, ground goes to ground. SDA goes to the SDA pin which is A4 and our clock SCL goes to A5. That is it for all the connections. Nothing much to it. So if we bring it in here and have a look, make sure you start with your pot all the way down or, you know, whatever position you want. Oh, shoot. Didn't want to power it that way. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a rough week. Had another death in the family. It was my aunt, my dad's uh, last remaining sibling. Passed away. She was 96, so my brain hasn't been too great here. Okay, so let's uh, let's zoom in here so you can see the OLED screen. Okay, so our analog value is the value being read by pin A0 from the potentiometer, and our PWM value is the value that it's putting out. In this case, 125, because this thing is going to start rotating at about 128 or so, so we don't need to go all the way down to zero. And if we turn this up, you can see the value is increasing and our PWM value is increasing. When our analog value gets to 1023, our PWM value 
is at 255. And you can see there, the fan is spinning. We bring it down, and you can see it slows down considerably. So what is the point of a simple little Arduino project like this? Well, the point of it is, and don't worry, we're going to get to the code here in a second. The point of it is super simple, and that is it allows us to understand that we can use the Arduino simply as an input-output processing device. We're taking our input, in this case, from the potentiometer but we could easily take it and that's what we're going to move on to here in the future from something like this Bosch BMP 280 environmental sensor okay and we'll get to we'll get to that further on down the road I want to make this really simple for everybody to understand anything can be our input we could use LDR light dependent resistors the brighter it gets the faster the fan spins and that's where the Arduino really excels it excels at taking whatever input you want whether it's a digital input or an analog input then it does its processing magic and it gives you what you want on the output in this case we're using an analog output okay now, one thing I didn't mention here is we have a 10K resistor on the gate of the MOSFET pulling it down to ground. The reason for that, the MOSFET doesn't behave like a BJT, where in a BJT, when you put um, current into the, the base, you open up a channel between the collector and the emitter, and when that current goes away, it shuts off. With a MOSFET, you're putting a voltage into the gate, and the gate, if we take a look here at our drawing, it has no connection to the drain to source channel. It is a field, an electric field, that's why it's called a FET, a field effect transformer. And that FET will stay on until we turn it off by bringing the gate lower than the uh, drain voltage. So that's why we are pulling it down between every on-off cycle of the um, PWM. And we can take a look at that here real quick on the oscilloscope. So if I bring in the oscilloscope here, and we'll hook it up, I just have to find the right, <laughs> the right connections. Try not to, uh, not to blow anything up. Oh, just like that, and I shorted it out. That's what I was attempting not to do. One moment, please. I just hooked up a wire to the gate, then we're connected down here at the ground. And then if we go in and have a look at the oscilloscope, uh, the oscilloscope, uh, oscilloscope if I can speak, pin here, we can take a look and see. The magic that is going on, it is a simple square wave. And if I turn that value down, we change the duty cycle, our on to off. The frequency remains pretty much the same. And that's all we're really doing with that MOSFET. So that is the hardware of it really quite simple now one thing you're going to notice turn this all the way down and stop the fan like I said the fan will run at about 128 but you can I don't know if you can see there we're at 135 and it's not really running yet because it has some inertia to overcome but if you give it a nice little kick it'll start right up Okay, let's uh, go and take a look at the code for this. You're going to find it's rather simple also. Okay, let's take a quick look at this code. This is for the Arduino potentiometer controlled fan with MOSFET. So first we have three include statements. These are what uh, tell the Arduino what libraries we're using. The first one is the wire library. That is the I squared C library so we can communicate with the OLED. Then we have this Adafruit 
GFX library, which is a graphics library. It's not particularly needed in this case, but we'll use it later on down the road. So I've left it in. And then we have the Adafruit SSD 1306. This is the library that drives the OLED screen. We definitely need that. Then we're going to create two integer variables. That means no decimal point. The first one is called pot read, and we set its value at zero. That is the initial value, and that is what we'll use when we read the potentiometer. The second is PWM out, and we'll also set its initial value at zero. That's what we'll use to control the speed of the fan. Then we have this one defined statement, which says OLED reset for. It's required by that. Um, 1306 library. It doesn't have to be a 4, but you have to call something in there, even though there's no pin for it and it doesn't use it. Next, we're going to set up the uh, OLED display. We do that by telling the library what we want to call it. OLED display, and we have to tell it what our reset pin is. In this case, pin 4. Now we have our setup, which runs once, of course. We should always start with a serial.begin. I use 9600 baud. You can use whatever you want. That gives us a serial port so we can look at values and such if we need to debug it. Then we're going to set up our two pins using the pin mode command. A0 is an input. That's where we'll read the potentiometer. And pin 3 is an output. That's where we'll send our... Um, PWM value out. Now the one thing you have to keep in mind is the UNO only has so many PWM pins so make sure you pick one of those. Then we will start up the display with the begin command telling it the library and this blah blah blah. If you're using the cheap Chinese display um, they're generally at hexadecimal address 0x3c. The official Adafruit is at 0x3d and that's what the library will put here if yours doesn't work, try changing it to 3C. Then we show what's in the display, which is nothing in this case, and we clear the display, and our setup is done. Now, here is the logic of the program. So the first thing we do is we read the pot, which is connected to A0, and we store the value in pot read. Then we need to map that 0 to 1023 value to the 0 to 255 value that the potentiometer can read. We do that using the map command. We tell it what variable to start with and where to store the output. Here is our input and here is our output. Pretty simple. Then we just have a couple of setup commands for the display here. We tell it what size the text should be, what color it should be, and where we're going to start. Then we're going to send our uh, our values that we're outputting here to the screen buffer, a heading of analog value, and then we'll show that pot read, a heading of PWM value, and we'll show PWM out. Then we need to call the display so we can see what we sent to the buffer. We're going to wait 100 milliseconds, clear the display. Then we're going to write our PWM value to pin 3, PWM out and then we go back up here and we start the whole loop again because everything in here runs over and over and over. Pretty simple. The only changes we'll be making when we change um, what our input or what our output is is we might have to change the libraries, you know, something like that. But this is the same logic that will be used over and over. We're going to read a value. That's our input we're going to process that value that's our processing and then we will output to our output device boom simple you see how simple it is input to output and again our input can be anything we want I mean we'd have to make a couple changes but we could easily use a sensor like this our output can also be anything we want watch this Pull that off of there, and I can stick in an LED with a proper current limiting resistor, and we can control the brightness of it also. Now remember, I've only got this going down to 
125, which is about half 50% duty cycle. But literally, it can be anything that we want it to be. And that's what makes our Arduino so great. We, we've eliminated a whole bunch of discrete components and we simply replace them with the Arduino which is able to take an input and control an output. So if you like that, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. I promise you we'll kick this up a notch. That's it. I'm out. Peace.